want you to fight for what you believe is yours. I want to show you the, the determination of when you fight for something you know that God has promised you. And getting what God has for you is not always easy. Because faith is an attitude, it's a mentality. It's, a, it's, it's I got to get what's mine. When I heard you talk tonight, Miss Webb, I heard and you survived a lot of hell. But if we look at you, you don't look your age. I mean, so I'm, I'm seeing that God has what? Has kept you. You know what I'm saying? VT, you're supposed to be dead. But God kept you. You know why? Maybe because your son coming out and need help. You never thought about like this. God has survived. You survived hell and came back. And you have survived. You know, I heard your testimony. So God has kept you. Why is God doing this? Because you are going to be witnesses to so many people. Yeah. And, the, and, the, and, the, and the day the day is out where we worship the super preacher because at the end of the day, we are the body of Christ. Yeah. And your vision is just as important as my vision. Just because the preachers up front and the big churches up front with the robes, it don't make them more important than you because everybody has a place to play in the body of Christ. Everybody has a place to play. And what God wants to do is position you, empower you, and make you who you need to become so you can fight for what's yours. God wants to make everybody have loved ones. God wants to take care of your family. God wants to bless you. God wants to keep you. But he also wants you to position yourself. And this is why I'm teaching this word tonight, because I believe there's a call of God on each one of us around this table. Now, you might not be an apostle or a prophet or an evangelist, pastor, teacher, but you know what you're called to? You're called to be a human being. Yeah. You're called by God. And God called you a special because of you, you can touch so many lives. I'll tell you this story a long time ago. I remember um, we used to live on 455 East 23rd Street growing up, and we had a problem with roaches. And uh, it was so bad in our house at one time uh, that my brother would feed them. He was jumping food. They would run out, you know. And we see the roaches. I said, it was real bad at one time. So, so uh, we realized we had to get the place fumigated. To, to get the roaches out. Because if you see one, trust me, there's more than one. Y'all yeah. know that, right? Yeah. That's the only one to let you see them. They wave at you. But, but behind the door, there's so many. You know, because yeah. then you have infestation. So you had to call a professional guy to come in and fumigate the place and get the roaches out. And they're, they're pretty tough insects. Yeah. And they move with lightning speed. All right? So egg can practically make them own cells pregnant, which is crazy. And they multiply, right? Mm -hmm. And God spoke to me. He said, I wish I had a church like the roaches. I said, what that? Yeah, now, I want to, I want the church to get into society, get into circles, and be so powerful they can't get rid of you. You, you got me? Mm -hmm. I want to multiply you so wherever you go, the devil can never drive you out. You know what I'm saying? That's what, that's what God. And even when they put insecticide on you, try to destroy you, you'll survive it and you'll come out. So you survived your hell. You survived your hell. You survived your hell and still come through your hell. You still survived it. You survived yours. You survived yours. You could tell many stories, but you survived. So their testimony of how stuff came against you, but you came through it. You came through it because God got a plan. God has an action. God got, God got something for y'all to do. And he wants you to know you are special in his sight. And I came to announce and tell you that. So that one little hope, that one little seed you had to make it, you can make it. You can make it. And God has given you abilities and gifts and talents to be greater you can ever think, dream, or imagine. Now, people who think they know you will, will say lies about you. They'll say you never make it. They say she this. She thinks she this. He think he that. You think you're God's gift to the world. You are God's gift to the world. <laughs> That's the problem. You are God's gift to the world. Because without you, there is no gift. You're God's gift. So God brings you to this earth to bring something to this earth to be a blessing to mankind. In this story, this woman, I liked her because she reminds me like a roach. Because she's determined. She, she's fighting for what's hers. She's going to get to Jesus to touch the hem of his garment so she can draw something into her body to stop her bleeding. This story is a woman that bled 12 years straight with a the continual menstrual cycle that never cut off. Now, come on, talk to me, ladies. Talk to me, ladies. Yes, now, ladies. now, I'm not a lady now, but I know my wife. You know, we, I know she used to go to them little things. She didn't do it no more. But, but there was a five-day or sometime a week period where the body purges itself. Mucus is released from the female body, stained with blood. And they call that the menstrual cycle where the, where the body cleanses itself, which proves that you can get pregnant because the egg is dropped. Am I correct so far? Yes, and sometimes when women are going through this cycle, it can be crampish. Sometimes I had women in my school, as a teacher in high school, had to go to the nurse's office. My, my daughter goes with tremendous uh, menstrual cramps due to the purging. Now think about if that thing never cut off and it stayed on 12 years straight, brother man. Mine stayed on for a year. Ooh, Jesus. Ain't that amazing? A whole year. So, and so they gave me to stop it. Jesus. 
So and when, you, and when you're having this thing, your body is wide open. So it's open to other stuff, other germs, other things. So you're wide open. In Jewish culture, when a woman was on her cycle, they would call her unclean. And she was not supposed to come near the Jewish society. So she's supposed to stay away because that's her unclean period. And during the Judaic law, it was really legalistic about it, which means stay on that side, don't come near us because you're clean, because you, you're unclean, don't come near us. So she was stigmatized. I miss somebody. Amen. She was a woman and she's bleeding constantly. And the Bible says she didn't get better, but rather grew up worse. And somewhere on this circle, sometimes you felt you was getting worse. You yeah. felt like you were getting bad, never getting better. Your marriage got worse. The knee got worse. Amen. Depression got worse. Uh, uh, the blood clot got worse. See, God always let me know something. If he bring you to it, he'll bring you up. He'll bring yeah. you through it. So you just got to have faith to position yourself to be just as determined as a roach is. Now, I, I had a roach one time. I'm making it funny, but I want you to remember these stories. When you see a roach, you can say, oh, Pastor Mike talking about roach. I saw a roach one time, so powerful, it seemed like he had a big, became immune to the poison spread. Yeah. I shot it with the poison. Bit. The nigga was sprinting around the circle, got yeah. up and ran away. Like, yeah. what, 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 what was in this dang gun spread? Remember that, that the roach took the hit, sprinted around, and ran away like nothing was, was a problem. And God said, there are people in the body of Christ that took the hell that the, day, that the devil gave them and got up for another day. That's you. Amen, somebody. What killed yeah. other folks made you. What laid folks in castes brought you out. Yes. What folks said you should never be, you came through it. Yes. So God allowed you to deal with it. He said, I'll bring you up through it. Yes. This woman here, when I read this story, this woman here bled every day. So she's bleeding, she's got a bimestral pass. If she's bleeding, she got to see the doctor. If she ain't got no, if she ain't got no insurance, come on, y'all talking. Insurance is very expensive. So she ain't got no money, got yeah. pockets with holes in them and money falling out. She's poor and she's stigmatized. She's a single woman, no husband, trying to miss her cycle, and they're calling her names. Now, come on, talk to me, somebody. Overlooking her. She feeling depressed, feeling all pressed. It sounds like some of us, we have the same issues. Hallelujah. Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes. And it seems like we don't get any better, but rather what? We rather grew worse. Yeah, right. And we're just trying to find somebody to help us. And all of a sudden, this man and the woman of God opens the doors. And now in this circle of the day, we're about to get healed and delivered yeah, because you opened the door. Because yeah. you said your home is my home. Yeah, and you yes. open the door gates. And now here comes Teresa. Here comes this person. Now the glory of God shows up in the bodily form. I reached yeah. out to one of my sisters who was at work and said, I got to go and help out my pastor. See, the problem is the church must understand that these are God's people. Yeah. No matter our problems, no matter our shortcomings, no matter what we feel we're not perfect enough, it doesn't matter because God's grace said, I looked beyond your fault and what? And saw your need. Yes. That's what love does. Yes. Love doesn't sit around and say, well, that's why the evil stuff happened to you. That's why all the bads are happening. We don't look at that. We look at just because you got a need, God wants to step in and touch your life. This woman was sick for 12 years straight. But look what happened to her. Sister Brenda, will help me out a little bit. Can you read a little bit? When they arrived, this is... Verse, what is it? That's the living Bible. You start at verse 24. 524. You see it? Jesus went. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Jesus went with him, and the crowd thronged behind. Follow him. Go ahead. And the crowd was a woman who had been sick for twelve years with a hemorrhage. Uh huh. She had suffered much from many doctors through the years, and had become poor from pain them. Go ahead. And was no better, but in fact was worse. Now watch. Now watch where her change comes. Go ahead. She had heard all about the wonderful miracles Jesus did, and that is why she came up behind him. Through the crowd and touched his clothes. Now, now I want to show you this. I'm, not like, I'm a very demonstrative preacher. All right, this is your jacket. Yeah. Okay, now I need to show you something. Very deep. I want to show you my Jewish culture. Okay, this represents a Jewish robe, and the Jewish rabbis will wear these robes. You ever see Jesus' robe on TV? Yeah. And at the bottom of the robe were tassels. That represents a tassel. All right, mm -hmm. the tassel represents a wing, W-I-N-G. In the book of Malachi, it says that this, the, the Messiah will come with healing in its wings. It means healing in the tassel. Okay. So when the tassel is at the bottom of the garment, which comes all the way down to the, down, I'm sorry, all the way down to the, all, all, all the way down to the bottom of the garment, okay. 
the tassel is down here. So this tassel represents the Messiah. So this woman said, if I can only touch the what? Him 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 which is the tassel. I'm saying he is the Messiah. I'm going to hear me today. Okay. Because the controversy was, is Jesus Christ the Messiah or is he not the Messiah? And the miracles he performed proved he was what? The Messiah. Okay. But there were Jewish folk and other folks who said he is not the Messiah. So it was a controversy. Some folks say he is. Some folks say what? He isn't. Yeah. Some folks say he's for real. Some folks say he's what? Faith. 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 Some folks like Pastor McDuffie. Some folks what hate yeah, Pastor yeah, McDuffie. Yeah, see, yeah. see, it's all the same. Just like yeah, you. Yeah. Some folks like you, and some folks yeah, want to hate yeah, you. Right. So you can never let your relation with Christ be predicated on people, right. because you never find anyone 100 percent say everything right about you. Okay. And if we were to go back over your life, did some stuff we didn't, we didn't do right. Come on, say me somebody. Yes. Amen. We all fall short. Amen. And if you go back far enough, yeah. you won't find something bad about somebody. Yeah. So I don't like when folks go and everybody's back you know, picking out something they did when they were eight years old, nine years old. Because yeah. everybody did something wrong growing up. Yeah. And here's the point. Yeah. The bottom of the of the road was where the healing was. And this is what the woman did. Let me show you this. She was sick, bleeding. She had to take a risk. And this is her risk. Watch the risk. I remember Michael Jackson back in the 70s. I remember Michael Jackson concerts. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. When it packed out, you were yeah. there. Yeah. You, you would be singing Mike 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 Jack Mike. Oh baby, give me one more chance. Show me how I love you. Ah! <laughs> they be falling all over the floor, but yeah. the place be jammed yeah. because the Jacksons was the bomb. I'm talking about the Jackson Five, y'all, yeah. yeah. real Jackson, Jackson y'all. You know, in the Five, they be singing her on the Afro, dancing, dancing, dance machine, da da. Back out. That was the crowd like size that followed Jesus. Wow. Yeah. So when he showed up. You couldn't just run up to him because everybody was around him. So the woman who was sick says, I don't know who y'all say he is, but I know he is the Messiah. Messiah. Now y'all can doubt, y'all can say he isn't, but I know if I get close to him, he gonna make me whole. So she had to fight her way. Y'all don't hear me today. She had to right. get through the crowd, the yeah. crowd of unbelief and player haters and I'm going to die. God won't help me. I'll never get healed. God won't. She got to do the faith, yeah, got to fight through that crowd like a roach fights to stay Determined. in your kitchen. Yeah. Determined to live in that wall. A roach isn't easy to get out your house. Yeah. You may have to fumigate your house a few times to get rid of them. Because yeah. when you yeah. see one, there's a few of them buddy someplace else. Yeah. These cats are rough and they fast, but they yeah. determine because they got to survive. They got to survive. Yeah. And this woman said, I'm going to survive. I got to get mine. And she had to press her way through this crowd, which could have been up to 15,000 people following Jesus. Wow. And she finally got yeah. down on her knees. And she crawled up, got through the crowd, yeah. got to the bottom, and reached for that tassel. And she touched the tassel. She just touched it. And this means this would happen. Amen. This is so deep. He walking. Everybody's bumping into him. Right? But every time he walk, he ain't stopped yet. He's walking. And everybody bumping into him. But when she touches him, he stops and turns around and does this. Who touched my clothes? Now, the common sense question is, Everybody touching you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you Michael Jackson, baby. Right. Everybody touching you. Yeah. That's, a dumb, that's a dumb question. Yeah. It's dumb to you, but not dumb to Christ. Nah. Because what he's really saying is, who called me the Messiah? Mm. Who reached yeah. in and said, this is who God says he is. Hallelujah. There's someone that's fully persuaded that says this breakthrough is mine. God will make me whole. God will restore my family. God will take away depression. God will give me a new job. God will restore my family. Yeah. See, you got to be so Hallelujah. determined that your faith will grab what you need. You got to be determined like a roach is determined. Yes. Woo! Amen. That woman got to the bottom of this clone, Miss Webb, and she touched this clone. We're going to read it. The Bible said Jesus stopped. She said she felt in her body that something happened. Virtue left out of Jesus' spirit, went through Jesus' body, went into his robe, dropped down to the side of the robe, went to the bottom of the hem, came through the tassel, which is called the wing, went into her body, stopped her blood flow. So the first time, she stopped bleeding. Wow. Out of how many years? Well, 12 years. years. Wow. Because she was determined to fight to believe. Let me tell you something. 
Some folks will continue to flow with the issues of struggle in their life until you start believing. Yes. Until you start saying, God, I'm here for a purpose. Yes. I'm not, this is not by accident. I don't care what the devil said and what folks it. said. I'm determined, even better than an instant call the roach. If he can be determined to stay in the house, I'm determined to be in the house of God. I'm a snatch with mine. God can rescue my marriage. God can restore my brain. God can give me new life. God can make me look 30, 30 when I'm even 60. Amen, somebody. Amen. If you are determined to believe. Yes. Woo! Jesus. Hallelujah. The Bible says she felt something in her body. What did it say? In her body? What did it say? Well, she thought to herself, if I can touch his clothing, I will be healed. Go ahead. And sure enough, as soon as she had touched him, the bleeding stopped, and she was well. God, her bleeding stopped, and, and she was what? Well. well. Now, I'm going to take this Bible, and I'm going to switch. Living Bible's power phrase. That means that the author puts his opinion in. This is a study Bible. You're going to do the same thing starting right here, and a great crowd followed him. Okay. Go ahead. And a great crowd followed him uh -huh. and thronged about him. Yes. And there was a woman who had... A discharge of blood for 12 years. Go ahead. And who has suffered much under many physicians and has spent all that she had and was no better than rather grew worse. Yes, Lord. She had heard the reports about Jesus mm. and came up behind him in the crowd and touched his garment. Now, keep, now know she came up from behind. All right. Mm -hmm. so, she, so all the crowd around, she got up and she touched the hat, the tassel from behind. Go ahead. Yes. For she said, if I touch even his garments, I will be made well. Notice before she touched, she talked. Yes, yes. See, but watch this. Before she touched, she talked. Before she touched, she talked. Before she touched, she talked. My question is, what's coming out of your mouth before you draw the power of God out? Do you speak more doubt or speak more faith? Do you say that you're beautiful? Do you say I'm the head, not the tail? Do you say I'm above, not beneath? Yes. Do you say I'm healed? Do you say yes. I got it going on? Do I say I don't look my age? See, you got to start saying what you believe God wants to do in you and stop just proclaiming what you just have. Because that woman said, I touch his clothes, I will be made whole. She was set. And the word, and the word shall in the English language is the strongest word for commitment. I shall. Be made whole. She knew it. She was committed to it. Go ahead. And immediately the flow of the blood dried up. Dried up. Uh -huh. And she felt in her body that she was healed of her disease. Now watch this. If you keep me right here, I'm show you this. It won't be much longer. So Jesus Christ is walking. All these folks bumping into him. And by everybody bumping him, he don't stop. Because their bump is not faith. That's See, right. in the 70s, we had this damn bump, bump, bump. Bump. Yeah. Yeah. Bump. Yeah. Yeah. Today that's the PG thirteen dance now. Right? Yeah. We, I love to go into the bump like now. Y'all yeah, still like yeah. it. Now we got all, all this other stuff. Yeah. But, but, <laughs> but but the deep thing is all these folks bumping to Jesus and he don't stop moving. Right. Do you got the faith to make God stop moving and mm. reach over and bless all you? Right now. Oh. Everybody moving all the time, going to church, coming to church, but everybody not moving God to get them healed. Faith makes God move. Not your tears. Watch this, y'all. Mm -hmm. Not what people say, what they call you. Faith to believe. And the word faith is fully persuaded. And when you're fully persuaded, your, your legs, your mind, your actions align to what you say. And he, she said, I don't care how much I'm bleeding, how I feel like this, how they overlook me, how they reject me, how they talk about me. The doctor said I'll be a mess all my life. I never have a new heart. I never get married. See, don't say that. Start saying, I will get this. I will get that. I will have this. So when you start talking like that, you're positioning yourself to take your faith and grab from Jesus what you want, what you need. And when he stops, when you say, go, Brendan, what happened? He did and what? Jesus, perceiving in himself that power had gone out from him, immediately turned about in the crowd and, said, and, turned, he said, and said, who touched my garments? What happened? The church folks said. And his disciples said to him, you see the crowd pressing around you, and yet you say, who touched me? My great translation, everybody touched you. That's a dumb question, because they're not thinking like Jesus thinks. He's saying, who had faith to faith believe and to pull the power out of me? Go ahead. And he looked around to see who had done it. But the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came in fear and trembled and fell down before him. Now, why is she scared? Why is she, why is she afraid? <laughs> What's she afraid about? Did she get healed? What's she afraid about? Because she's a woman. She had a menstrual cycle. And she wasn't supposed to be up there doing that. Yeah, she was right. able, watch this, to violate man's law to get inside of God's law. See, sometimes you got to break away from people thinking yeah. and the limitations. 
You go away from church folk, because church folk would talk out of healing too. They, they, there's something that worse sometimes, because they don't believe and they, they sound so negative. You gotta get away from the people. Mm -hmm. You gotta break away from people's opinion and say, I'm going to get mine. Now, you didn't get yours, but I'm getting mine. Okay. You, you don't want your breakthrough? I'm gonna get my yeah, breakthrough. I, I, I don't study that roach. That roach is determined to stay in my house. No matter, I put a raid on him and raid and dad got a nuclear level, and he's still surviving. Well, guess I learned. I gotta get what's mine. That woman, if I can only touch, I shall be what? Oh, mm -hmm. and when she touched him, Jesus turned around and said, now who touched my clothes like that? Who positioned himself like that? Who did this? Who reached him? All Out right. of 15,000 people, only one of you touched me. Listen, y'all. Listen, this is very key. 15,000 people and only one of them touched us. God is not moved by crowds. He's moved by faith. That's why I would come minister here if it was just you sitting here. I'm never moved by crowds. My, my church would tell you, I'll preach to a room full of people and this eight-year-old kid there because I'm determined that what God told me to do, I got to do it whether you like it or not. Maybe somebody. Amen. I'm determined to do this whether you reject me. I still got it because God is holding me accountable for what he placed in my life. So if folks don't believe in your dreams, forget them. Get your dreams back. Get your power back. Because you're the one that got to deal with your issues of blood. And ain't everybody, it's you, it's you, it's you, it's you, it's you. That's what issues, issues of blood, issues of life. I don't want, I don't want to be put my blame on others. I want to say God has made me victorious. I want to say the healing is mine. The marriage is mine. Debt's being canceled out. I'm being exalted by the spirit of God. This is what I learned. Is that, that woman did something where 15 other folks did not say. And then Jesus said, that's her. She touched me. And the Bible, she, she fell down. She came down on his feet. Right? And, then, and then the Bible says that she said, she told him all the truth. That's what she said. He said, okay, y'all. Now, while she's talking, she has an audience of 15,000 people. Now, she went from the back of the line to the front of the line. Many of that last shall be what? First. So never be moved by people who overlook you and don't call you important. Because what God would do, if your faith is right, he would take you in the back of the line of PSEG and put you in front of the line. My okay. God. If you dare to what? To believe. Yes. That woman came and said, all right, this is what happened. Remember, it's Shanae or Martin. This is what happened. Uh, <laughs> he said, uh, I've been bleeding for 12 years. I, yeah, I know I'm on the menstrual cycle. I, uh, well, well, let, me, let me finish the story. Let me finish the story. All y'all was bumping into Jesus, and y'all didn't get him to stop moving because y'all didn't believe. <laughs> but I took a risk, and I and I touched the hem of the garment with the tassel list, and according to Malachi, it says that the Messiah will have healing in his wings. So I reached for the tassel, and she told him all the truth in front of 15,000 people. So when they started saying, I need to do what you did. Yeah. I couldn't get healing. Now I heard you preach. Now I can follow your example. Now I believe in it. The Bible will say it, and everybody started to say, let me touch that tassel too. Let me touch that tassel. So now she became the teacher to those who first had scorned her. Right. And the Bible says, what does it say? Wait, came in, uh -huh. feared and trembled, and fell down before him, uh -huh. and told him the whole truth. And he said to her, daughter, your faith has made you well. No, nah, no. Nah. That Bible says well, but the, really the, the Greek language is, it made you whole. Um, and then, and then you know, to say this and go to close. They want to take you and A in comments and want to pray for you. There's a difference between being made well and being made whole. Okay. <laughs> There's a difference between healed mm -hmm. and made whole. I know folks who got healed and never made whole. If I got a problem with my blood flowing and it flows every day, if I'm healed, it stops flowing. But what about the damages left? What about the damages that's left? What about all the stuff I had to spend money on? What about, what about all the stuff? All right, all right, okay. The cancer is taken out, but you took out the prostate. Yeah. <laughs> all right, all right, oh, 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 I'm healed now, but look at all the stuff I lost. I don't want to just be healed. I want to be made what? Whole. That's what whole means. So when that woman got up and told him the truth, Jesus went from healing to whole. She got healed, but when Christ said, go, your faith that made you a whole. Everything she lost due to the 12 years of bleeding, Christ gave it back to her. That's the power that's in this room right now. God want to give you stuff back that the medicine took away. Jesus. 
God want to put stuff in your body that your sickness said. God want to give you such a love. He frees you totally. So, oh my God, God is so good. Because God wants to put back with the enemy. So God want to restore two, two new knees. See, I just believe God will do some crazy stuff. And you go to the doctor, you're going to say, oh, Mr. What's name? Where you get all that stuff in, in between your kneecaps? What's going on here? Those are the creative miracles of God. But you got to what? You got to what? Believe. believe. You got to believe. So I got to believe. Yeah, that you gotta right. believe. And when you believe, when you believe, man, it is an aggression. It is a position of power. Mm -hmm. It's a position. Come on, brother. Come on in. God bless you, man. God, right. God bless you, man. All right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When you are made whole, there's a risk you have to take. The risk of the crowd fighting against people's opinions. But you are determined to say, I gotta get to this place to get what's mine. It's not after that BT show up here at the same time. God set her up. <laughs> she walk up in here. Mm -hmm. that's my childhood friend Teresa walks up. That's, that's, it's not accident. It's not, and, for, and you remember me praying in your park back by my house. And he, he lived on Mass Nav. That was the church that made me the most famous preacher in Paris in 1997. Mm -hmm. I mean, he, all this is all God like a chess player setting stuff up because I never quit. I'm the woman with the issue of blood. Who says Jesus makes you a whole? Oh, That's why God has retarded my aging process. I know I don't look 55 years old. Because it's the presence of God that retards the aging process. That's the God. That, that's why Moses was 120 and never wore glasses. Moses wow. was 120 and his wow. eyes never dimmed because he spent most of the time on the vitamin D and hanging out on mountaintops. Listen, y'all. Mm -hmm. Trying to tell you, if we learn to listen to God, God will make you what? Whole. Say, make me whole, Jesus. Make me whole, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you for watching. We'll go to the music.